Alrighty, everybody. We just got done. Let's left click in here so I'm in an active window. We just got done creating all the text that goes down here in this section. We're going to create the text that goes in the middle. We're going to add a reference image, put another label up on the top, and then and I haven't covered this in class yet, guys. So if you if you catch it and you put it in your title block, good on you. There's another piece of text that's going to go down over here on this side, and it's got a lot of fields in it. So, we ready? Of course we are. Here we go. I'm going to zoom in a little so I can see what's going on. I'm going to come this way. There, I can kind of see what's going on now. I want to use M text again. So I can use that drop down. I can select multi-line text. If you want to, at the command at the command prompt, to use get to multi-line text is just MT. That's all it is. MT. Same thing. Specify my first corner, and I'm just going to make something about this big for now. Now, before I begin typing anything, I'm going to click on this drop down list, and I'm actually going to select the Times text style. This is the text style that I want to use for this bit of text, and I'm going to change what size it is. I'm not going to. I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to use three thirty seconds of an inch. I'm going to draw this at one quarter inch text height. Boom! I just typed it in, and I'm ready to go. Now. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to change its justification. You guys are familiar with this. This is paragraph formatting. I'll show you the difference here in a minute. This is changing the justification of the entire text object. This changes the justification of only the selected bit of text. So there can be a disconnect. I tend to leave it set to the default. I don't like changing it. It's just fewer variables that I have to remember of what's actually actually happening in front of me, the better. That's just how my brain works. So I'm going to change its justification to middle center. There we go. Now, we're going to make this text. We're going to type in the text that I have listed that's uh, actually in the handout with all the upper cases and everything. So, uh, turn my caps lock on. Department project, push return. Did I say quarter inch? Yes, yeah, it's quarter inch. Man, that is huge. Uh, caps lock off. Now you notice a couple things that are going on here. One, yeah, this text is huge, but it should be right. Uh, but you notice that I've got the uh, the red underline that says that I've got things misspelled. So just like in Word, I can right click and it will it will allow me some uh, options to correct that. So I can just correct that, or I can manually type my way and correct it. And you notice that it auto wrapped. It's perfectly normal, perfectly acceptable. When you get to the end of the line and you want to start a deliberate next line, and then just like in Word, hard carriage return and you can keep going. Yes, 26, 20. Course 501. Of course, those of you who are in Course 502, you're going to use 502. Hopefully that would be evident. Left click out in space. Yeah, you'll notice that the text, what size it was on the screen while I was editing it was a lot larger than this. And and there's just a funny display glitch there that was happening. And I think it had to do with changing the size of the text before I actually went to begin typing it. But obviously this doesn't quite look right. My text wrapping isn't correct. So if I double click on this text and I want to edit it, all I have to do is grab a hold of this end edit box and I can pull him out. Alternately, if I select the text and don't do anything else, just one click on it, that's what this little guy is right here. He's just a resizing arrow. So I can bring him back like that. I can move him in and out to whatever, wherever that I want. And because I've center justified this, you can see that it's, it's modifying both ends at the same time. So it's centered around the point. This is the insertion point. So if I come in here and I, I, I want to edit this text, I can actually take this line of text and I can have it spread to fit everything. I can take that and I can write justify this one line of text. And as I modify and move, you can see how everything just tracks right along with it. That's the difference between justifying 
just a paragraph within your text versus justifying the entire text object. So I like everything to be justified, well, most everything to be justified, just by blanket paragraph, leave everything to the default and use the justification there. So I'm done editing my text, I'll left click. I want to rotate this object. RO for rotate, select my object, so I can specify the base point, mouse over until I see that insertion point. Now, right now, if I left click, that is the insertion point, that is the point that I selected, even though my crosshairs were not right there. So to specify the rotation angle, I can actually drag him up so he snaps to that vertical, uh, that vertical tracking block, or I can just type in 90 degrees and he's moved. <clears throat> now if you look at the handout, I've got some dimensions on how I want this object placed. So if I move this text object from its insertion point, I can mouse over that point, and I can drag my mouse down, type 6 and push return. So where I'm moving it from is 6 inches below the insertion point of this object, which is the middle center of the bounding box for this object. And then I can actually just left click right there on the middle point of that polyline, and he is perfectly in place, just like that. Ooh, ah, ain't it special. Okay, I'm going to zoom into this upper corner here, and I'm gonna open my web browser. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of talking puts a frog in your throat. All right, <clears throat> I don't even know what my start page is. I think it's just the whatever default is there. Uh, and hopefully the internet is up and working right now. If not, this is going to be embarrassing. UNT Eagle logo. It's thinking, supposed to be thinking. There it goes. UNT. Let's do you. It only took half of it. There we go. Select images. <clears throat> and I'm going to look through the available options that I have. Uh, let's look at this one. It's kind of a small one. It's only 300 pixels across. I want something that's a little more high quality than that. That's, another G that's a GIF. That one's good. Let's see what this one looks like. <clears throat> Give it a second to think, and it's a thinking. Okay, you know, at first, at first glance, this looks perfectly fine, with one kind of big exception. If you know anything about image editing, you know this little checkerboard pattern means that it's a transparent image. AutoCAD doesn't like transparent images. It takes all the transparency and makes it print black. We don't want that. This is not what we want. So I'm just going to use the next item, the next object in the list, which is this guy, and he's fine. So I'm going to right click on this object and I'm going to say save picture as. And I want to put this file right next to where I'm saving my title block. Now you're not going to see anything here. It's not going to show it. But if I open up my folder, I already have open. This is my documents folder. This is where I'm saving all my stuff. So I open this up. There's my title block. I'm working on this title block. So I'm working in the Documents, CVAD Blocks directory. So I come over here, when I save this image, Documents, CVAD Blocks, this is exactly where I want to save it. I'm good. So click Save. <clears throat> so I've saved that image. I'm going to close out of my web browser. I don't need him right now. Now, now we can see there's that image that we just downloaded, and he's in the folder immediately, just right smack next to the title block that I currently have open. Okay, so I'm going to go to my title block file. I want to move up here. I'm going to change my active layer. I don't want G title block text. I want G XREF image, XREF image. And ooh, I found a typo. That's supposed to be IMG, not ING. I'm going to fix that. Just OCD enough to want to change it. So I highlight that. I can right click. 
or as shown right here, I can click F2 on my keyboard. Those of you who are using a Mac in parallels, this is not quite going to, the F2 doesn't exactly work. I think you actually have to hold down the function key and push F2 to get this to work. So rename the layer, use my arrow keys, and move my cursor right there, make it an M, because it's supposed to be IMG for an image, IMG. Take my mouse off of the layer dialog so it goes away. <clears throat> All right, so I've got my AutoCAD window open. I'm looking at this little, the, the upper right-hand corner of the tile block. I'm going to open my Explorer window. I'm going to select my image. All I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop my image onto my AutoCAD window. And I said, wow, there's this big funny green rectangle. I'm actually referencing in that image. This is the boundary box for that rectangle. I'm just going to left click somewhere and say I want it here. I'm going to specify a scale factor of one because I don't know exactly what size I need it to be yet. Return. What angle do I want it at? I want it at angle zero. Push return again. There's my image. <clears throat> now, it's obviously too big. So I'm going to type SC for scale. I'm going to select my object. My base point is going to be the lower left hand corner. <clears throat> I want to establish a reference length. I know what the new length of this bottom edge of the rectangle needs to be, but I need a reference value to establish a scaling point from. So type R for reference. I'm going to click that same bottom left hand corner. Now I move my mouse and click the bottom right hand corner. And now you can see as I scale that it's tracking along with my mouse movements just perfectly. So I'm going to key in 2 dash 3 slash 8. 2 and 3 eighths inch. Anytime you need to, uh, 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 to put a distance and you need to, dis uh, uh, to separate uh, inches from fractions, you always have to have that dash in there. If you use a space, AutoCAD will assume the space is an enter and it will accept a value of 2 and not ask if two and three eighths. So push return. That image is two and three eighths of an inch across. So I'm going to zoom out just a hair. Not that much. Zoom in a little. There we go. This this will do for now. So M for move. I'm going to select my image. Push return. Now I'm going to hover over the top midpoint of the the bounding edge. I'm going to move my mouse up, and I'm going to input one quarter of an inch. So where I'm moving it from is one quarter of an inch above the midpoint of the top edge of this image. But I want it to be centered in this space right in here. So how do I get that? Well, I'm going to pan a little bit and I'm going to use my tracking options. I'm going to move my mouse down here and hover over the midpoint of that top line so that I establish a tracking vector. I can then take that tracking vector up to that intersection right there. Left click. Just like that. All right. I'm going to copy this piece of text. I'm going to edit this text because Half of what I need is, is already here. Um, zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. Highlight this object. I'm going to rotate. I don't care where I'm rotating it around, but I want to rotate it negative 90 degrees. OK. I'm going to zoom in again. Not that much. That'll do. OK. And I want to edit this object. So highlight my object double click on it so that I can begin editing it. <clears throat> All I want to do, hey, don't do that. It went away. Come back. There we go. Now I'm going to keep this, this upper middle line. I'm going to delete out everything else. Highlight it and delete it. There we go. And come right here, backspace, push return. That's looking great. Now I'm going to highlight everything. I'm going to hold down the control and shift key on the keyboard and type U. That is 
a multi-line text shortcut to instantly make your selected text all uppercase. If you want to make it all lowercase, it's Control Shift and L. Unfortunately, I don't think they have one for title case, which is the first letter, letter is capitalized and the remaining letters are lowercase. I don't think they have one for that. So once again, Control Shift and U for uppercase, Control Shift and L for lowercase. I want it all uppercase, just like that. Okay, I'm done editing. Click out nowhere. Highlight this. Come back over to properties. And I want this to have a height of 330 seconds. There it is. Boy, that looks teeny. Now you can see as I change the, uh, the, the, the size of the text, the size of the bounding box does not change with it. So I want to change this, but if I want to change the bounding box, I can either use the grip edit, or you could also type ed at the command uh, command line to edit any text. It says it does the same thing uh, as uh, a double click. Come on, there we go. Move him in. I want him to wrap like that. There we go. Yeah, not thrilled with this mouse. Okay, done editing. M for move. And I'm going to move that piece of text, push return, mouse over the insertion point to get my vector tracking, drag my mouse up, type in one quarter of an inch. <clears throat> That's where I'm moving it from, and I'm moving it to the bottom middle point of that rectangle, just like that. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. All righty. I've got one last piece of text to create. I'm just going to create it from scratch, so I go back up to my layer list. Title block text. I'm going to zoom in on this bottom left-hand corner of the title block. And back to drop-down, multi-line text. Drag him out. He's going to be he's going to be long and not very tall. Ultimately, I'm going to change his style. I'm going back to make sure I'm using Arial. And instead of three thirty second, he's going to be a sixteenth. <clears throat> he's not very tall. So this is where things get a little interesting. I'm going to use more fields here. And the first field that I put in is document file name. UNT title block. That's fine. Uppercase. This time I want to see the path in the file name, and I want to include the extension. Boom, there he is. Now, it's kind of hard to see. I can zoom in a little. There we go. You can see him, uh, my cursor is blinky flashing away. Everything is happy there. So I'm going to push return. And now what I can do is I can actually enter, I can enter manually enter text, and I'm going to say, I'm going to put this in uppercase too. Plot date, a colon, and a space. And then I'm going to input another field. And this time, instead of document, well, the document stays the same. Nope, it isn't document. Plot. And this time we want plot date. And I want something other than just a regional short date because it's going to give you, oh golly, where is it? Well, yeah, what we see here in the beginning, that little bit right there, that's going to be the value it, 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 it prints out. But I want to see not only the date, but I want to see the time. So I want the date and the time. I don't need it down to the second, but I want the time. And this is really, really handy. This turns out to be incredibly handy in an office environment when you have multiple people trying to plot stuff out for a deadline. You want to know, is that what, you know, when was this thing printed? Is it the latest version? Well, you look down, down over in the bottom left-hand corner of the sheet. I've got this in all my stuff where I work. You look in the bottom left-hand corner of the sheet and you say, well, when was it printed? Well, this was only printed an hour ago. Do we have anything more recent than an hour ago? No, we don't. Okay, so it answers the question without having to be, you know, you can look at a glance and find out the answer to your, to, to your information. I'll click OK. There we go. Now, we haven't printed this yet, which is why it doesn't show anything, and that's fine. It's totally fine. I'm going to put a semicolon here. Now, this next part is going to seem a little strange. But I'm including it just for the sake of completeness. And I'm, I'm going to type in 
plotted by a colon and a space. Now, theoretically, this should not be any different than the other end of the title block sheet that says, what's the student name, or drawn by. But occasionally, you've got somebody who prints something out who's not the same person who worked on it. So in this case, who is the last person to print it? Especially if they got something wrong, whether they were the one editing it or not, or you can compare and contrast with somebody who printed it versus who changed it. it it's a great way to keep track of the information of who did what when. Again, not as important to do in a classroom environment, critical in an office environment. So I'm gonna go back to field and I can click on, I can either click log in, which is gonna be my name. Now for you guys, most of the time, if you're doing this on a lab equipment, this is actually going to show the log in name of the office or of the, uh, the, the lab equipment that you're using. So you, you can even, you can use this to track down what machine you tried that you uh, put this in on. And I wanted to, I'll just leave the formatting as none. I can make it uppercase or lowercase or title case or first capital or, you know, there's, there's options here. I'm just going to leave it set to none. Boom. So there it is. I'm done. I'll left click out of nowhere. I'm going to zoom back a little bit. Not quite that far. I need to see what I'm doing here. Come on. There we go. Uh, I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. Highlight it. Move it up. <clears throat> And it's not in the right spot now, and that's fine. Now, one of the things I wanted to show you, when you have text that's uh, oriented like this and you go to edit it, you can double click on it, you can type ED at the command line and then select it either way is fine. AutoCAD is gonna try to be nice to you and wrote and, and show you this properly oriented. And I wanted to do this because I need to change this justification. Uh, I'm gonna make this one bottom left. <clears throat> there we go, just like that. And now I'm going to move him, there we go, Just left click until I get to the end point, drag him off like that, type 3, 30 second, boom, just like that. Ladies and gentlemen, our title block is done. I look forward to seeing you guys in class. You guys have a great night.